Does it work? I asked. Does it work? You see, I was with a group of people and we were looking for a piano for our small little church that was forming in Kisumu, Kenya. Years ago, I lived in Kenya and there I worked with a lot of different churches trying to build up congregations, traveling along the western area of Kenya from village to village. In one particular area, we wanted to establish a church and there were a lot of diverse people coming together who said, we love to make a joyful noise and wouldn't it be nice if we had a piano? And lo and behold, someone had an old upright piano to give away. So we went over to check it all out. My first question was, does it work? You see, it had suffered a lot of travel coming from Europe on a ship. It had been there uh, in someone's home for years. It was one of these glorious old antiques from the early colonial days of people coming to uh, East Africa and trying to establish a sense of community. And I looked at it and I thought, wait a minute. I don't know about trying to move this one more move, trying to get it to the church, but does it work? Well, the man said, let me show you. And he simply sat down and suddenly began to play the keys and a yeah, wonderful, joyful noise was coming out and it was so exciting to listen to the music that he brought. I said, we'll take it. We brought it to the church and that piano was put to service for years, making great joyful noise, making a wonderful sound of celebration as people began to uh, bring to it along coupled with the drums and all the rhythms of African life coming together. The music of that piano resounded for years and the question was, does it work? Yes, it worked when it was put into service. You see, today's world is asking the very same question of us. Does your faith work? Is your faith really at work? Does it really work for you? People ask, should I come to church? Why come to church? What's there about a church? Does it really work? Why come to classes? Why should we learn about class? I mean, what do we got to learn? Does it really work? Why be spiritual at all? Is there really a need to do that? And does it work? You see, people are asking about your spiritual life and your faith. They want to know, does it work or is it just another pretty faith? Is it just that? Or is it something that's alive and at work within your life? Is it really demonstrating? Is it showing to the world? Today, we're talking about living bright because that's what today's text is all about. Bringing life to our faith, living bright living like a light that shines and radiates for all the world to see. That beautiful text you all share together says, faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But bringing life to it is found within that service that we bring to our faith, those ways that we demonstrate and live out our faith. The world is hungry to see it being demonstrated. Show me, show me. You'd think the whole world was from the state of Missouri, the show me state. You see, it's all that heart and cry that they're ready to say, we want to see a demonstration of living faith. But that faith is not alive unless there's some sort of works there. People want to see it in some way and they want to see it revealed in a brilliant, bright way that brings clarity and understanding how important it is. How many of you have ever seen those searchlights going around, circling around as you drive down Interstate 85 around North Druid Hills? You probably saw a lot of them. Uh Uh-huh, you're shaking your hands. You saw them. That was the pink pony. Uh, Yeah, Uh, that was a a little strip club that had all these big searchlights that would go on. And at evenings, you'd look into the sky and they were bright lights. Notice there wasn't any kind of soft little dim light, a little glimmer. It wasn't a little flicker. It was a consistent searchlight circling around, going in rotation around, drawing attention to say, I want to be at that destination. I want to know where those lights are coming from. You see, so it is, as we're called to live bright, the world would want to see. I see the clarity. I see that there's a destination I want to come to. I want to be part of what you have. I want to experience it. Your faith is alive and real. It's brilliant. It's shining bright. That's one of our big beliefs here at City of Light. We are a light for the world. We believe that. We live it. We embrace it. We hold it dear to our hearts. We believe that a light that is set on a higher consciousness, set on a hill, cannot be hidden, as the Scripture invites us to understand that when we rise up to this great awareness, we become that brilliance for the world. We become that which draws others to us into this wonderful awareness. So living faith, living it alive, is living bright. 
Having faith that you demonstrate and you share, you manifest in such wonderful ways. Having a faith that says, let me tell you all about it. Here's how it's worked for me today. Here's how it's alive in my life today. I wanna invite you then to challenge these promises for you to really demonstrate. We've gotta stop for a moment and say, I'm gonna challenge these principles, these promises of God. I'm gonna challenge the truth that's been shared. If it says, as you believe, so shall you receive, I'm gonna challenge that. And I challenge you to do that, and it's okay to do that. It's a good thing. Throughout scripture, there's an invitation in Malachi that says, prove me. God is saying, prove me, test me, try me, come to me with expectation. Come with the spirit of saying, I'm gonna see, does this really work? Because I believe in, if it works, it's gonna happen for me. So when we step out in faith, and it's a living faith, it's alive within our lives, and we say to one another, I believe in the impossible, I believe, and as we talked about last week, I hold you in consciousness in the all good, I know the all good is here. As we embrace all that, I'm, we speak it, we invite people to experience it, saying it works, it works, it works. How beautiful it is because then we get the attention of others concerning our faith when we demonstrate, when we show it, when we're offering in some capacity of service. Now we can demonstrate in all different kinds of ways. You can demonstrate through your testimony, through the witness you share, through the words of your experience. You can demonstrate it too as well through your service. Giving that time and talent of your life, sharing and saying, this is how I live, this is how I believe, this is how I demonstrate my faith. It's alive within me and I do so by offering service. For when we do this, people begin to see that which you really believe. I see here at City of Light your work of compassion. And I see your hearts being stirred by the desire to be compassionate people that meet needs. I see your beliefs then in action as you rise up in service to say, I'll be here with the food bank. I'll help with the clothing closet. I'll be here to provide food for the dinner for the hungry and the homeless. I will share in the do unto others offering. I will participate in these special drives of sleeping bags for the homeless. And on goes the list of things that you do that say, I share my belief because that belief is God loves everyone equally. God shows no partiality. God so loved the world and that whole world includes each and every one of us. That belief that says, I am one with the divine and the divine is working through me, is seen through those compassionate works. You're saying, I'm being the hands of God. I'm revealing God to the world around me. Through the service you do, you're really demonstrating your beliefs. I believe that all things are possible for the God of possibility is working through me now. So service demonstrates a faith, a belief. People see it. They witness it. And when they do, they see what it's called living bright, living alive. Because it's not enough for us to just grow in spiritual understanding. Now, we here at City of Light, we're passionate about your education. We're passionate about stirring your faith because we understand that your level of faith is only as great as the level of your understanding. If you don't understand, if you don't comprehend, if you don't get it, oh, you're struggling. You're wondering. It's hard to be that bright light. It's hard to live bright. We're very passionate about that. So offering all these classes is for your spiritual growth and development. But you know what? It's not just about receiving a degree from Emerson Theological Institute or auditing classes just so we've got lots of wonderful knowledge. What do we do with that? What do we do with all that we've learned? What do we do with this wonderful understanding? We've got to do something with it. We've got to demonstrate it. We've got to share it. We've got to give it out. We've got to live bright. Jacob's ladder in the Bible. You all familiar with that story? Jacob having a dream and here's the ladder appearing and there's angels ascending and descending. Ascending and descending. Really speaking to us that it's not enough to reach to heavenly heights of understanding. It's not enough to go to class and say, oh, I've got all this head knowledge. Oh, I've got this wonderful understanding of faith. Oh, I can really understand metaphysical Bible. Oh, I really get all this stuff. I got all this head knowledge. It's not just ascending in higher consciousness, but descending, coming back down in the real world where we touch the lives of human beings with service, where people say, that faith that you have, 
I see it's living. It's alive. It's being demonstrated through everything that you do. For when we really become into relationship with the divine, something happens to us. We want to reach back to help others. Interesting. Because we're pressing forward. We're moving on. We're pressing on in a wonderful way of moving. I'm going higher and higher in my consciousness, my understanding. I love it. I'm spiritually growing. I'm just climbing higher and higher. But we want to reach back and help those who may still be in that realm of darkness and lack of understanding. Maybe lost and feeling in the sense of, I don't know where to go in that. Not lost, being hidden or removed from God, but lost in a consciousness and that they said, oh, I didn't know that the divine has always been with me, never leaving nor forsaking me. So when we've had this ignited relationship with God, we want to reach back and help somebody else. We want to help them along. And the more content we become with our relationship with the divine, the more that thought, how can I help, replaces what do I want? Big thing. You know, in life, sometimes it's always, what do I want? What do I want? Where am I going? What about me? What are you doing for me? And suddenly it's replaced as we're involved in a living faith that's full of service and demonstration. It's now full of this wonderful thought. How can I help? What can I do? What can I do that changes this world? It happened for me years ago as a child, as a young man. I grew up in a preacher's kid, uh, as a preacher's kid in the pastor's home, and you would think, well, you became a pastor just because your dad was a pastor. Not true. Because I had other interests in my life. Like every young boy, you all wanted to be a fireman. You all wanted to be a policeman. We all wanted to be something else. I wanted to be an architect. I wanted to be a graphic designer as I grew up. I thought other things were there. But there was something about serving and living out my faith that drew me to say, I really want to be a minister. I really want to be a pastor. Because something happened for me, and I felt like I owed it to give it back to the world. Somewhere along the line, there were many who were instruments of turning the light on within me of awareness that gave me inspiration. I said, I just have to give back. I want you to have the same experience I did, or a unique experience of your own light going on. I want you to have it too. That passion grew within me, and I just said, if it happened for me, I want it to happen for you because it's not an, I have just too much joy, too much love, too much wonderful expression of the divine. i got to share it, and I want you to experience it too. You see, that's when faith comes alive, when we want to then say, it's not just something I hold within me, but I share with one another and I give to others. It's that ability that says, within me, I have a drive. I want to create a world that works for everyone, not just a few. I want to create a world that around me that's not just working for me, but works for everyone. I want to create that kind of uh, awareness and consciousness of love and grace, compassion, equality, inclusion, unity and harmony, all these wonderful attributes. I want everyone to experience it just the same. So when we find living bright is really living out in demonstration and in service, people say, well, that sounds really good, but what's really in it for me? What's there? You know, it sounds really good. A lot of church people, you know, church leaders, people who feel like that's their calling. It's good for them. What's really in it for me? Here's the big thing. When we are involved in service, we are transported to another place. Our faith becomes so alive, we no longer think about the head, but we think about the heart. We combine those two in a wonderful moment in service and in sharing. We begin to move from just this wonderful knowledge of I know God loves me to now I demonstrate God loves me to now a heartfelt moment of I know that God loves you too. And we live out from that persuasion. We move then beyond our own ego, our own self. Years ago, there was a young man who shared with me, I so enjoy serving in the Compassion Ministries. Helping out with the food bank on Fridays has transformed my life. His particular testimony says, I realized that while I served for four hours on Friday and helped with the food bank, I hadn't even thought once about my entire life and my challenges and my issues and my problems. He said, you don't realize I'm going through all kinds of stuff. I'm a recovering alcoholic. 
I'm going through all kinds of issues and baggage and tr- trouble and turmoil in my own consciousness. And every day I walk in. But when I come to work at the food bank and give service, when I become to share, what happens is my whole life is transformed. And for that time, I don't even think once about my problems, my issues, because I'm there to be there for someone else. The service that I offer is really giving me something very valuable, he said. I felt linked to the larger world. Beautiful transition for his life because what happens is, he said, in essence, I changed my story for that time. You know how does people got their story? I'm a victim. Oh, I've got problems. Oh, you don't know the trouble I've seen. Why me, Lord? Oh, and we go on and on. We have our stories. And we like to hold on to our stories because many times in victimhood, we can be defined by those stories. We like to hold on to those stories. We love telling them. People gather around, let me hear you tell my story. And our story then becomes our very biology, the makeup of our being. Suddenly when that's changed... I'm not a victim. I'm not uh, suffering. I'm in this moment of service and I'm giving, sharing. I'm in this moment where I'm a light. I am for the first time living bright. Faith alive at work within me. Helping others is such a powerful way to express our spirituality. And how important it is that we do this because it keeps us linked to this wonderful world around us. It keeps those lights going on one right after the other. Years ago, I lived in Kansas City, Lee Summit to be exact, a suburb of Kansas City. I lived right by Unity Village and I didn't even know it was there. I didn't pay any attention to it. I was busy and all consumed with other things in my lifetime. And one of the big things was a festival that happened every year in Kansas City out of the plaza. It was Thanksgiving. It was the lighting of the plaza. You see, the plaza was this wonderful shopping district. It was beautiful in its design. It had all this old world charm with lots of fountains. And people were drawn there for the holidays to do all their holiday shopping. And they had a great festival every Thanksgiving Eve where they would turn on the lights Every single building out on this multi-block plaza was covered, with, outlined with little white lights. How beautiful it is. Light bulbs all around, creating the shapes and forms of rooftops and outlines of all the buildings. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing to behold. The thing is, one person was always selected to flip the switch. Just one person. All it took was one person And when they flipped the switch, light bulb after light bulb began to go on. And it was just like across the whole plaza. The lights came and illumination happened. And it was wonderful. What an amazing experience to be there right there at that moment when suddenly someone hits the switch and that one person impacted the whole plaza. So it is as we understand with each and every one of us. We may be that one person that's needed to show living faith that turns the light on in someone else's life, that's living bright yourself enough with the power and intensity and to demonstrate through service to the world around us what it really means. Years ago, we had these wonderful T-shirts that said, show me some love. Do you remember those T-shirts? We had them on sale out in our bookstore uh, years ago. And uh, show me some love was the big uh, words across your chest if you wore this T-shirt. And then in fine print, was a little saying from Mother Teresa that in essence was saying, stop just talking about your faith, your good, and demonstrate it. Show it. Because the world was crying out for someone to show it. And at that time, that was the birthing of some of the new efforts of our compassion program of feeding the hungry and the homeless because we realized there were a lot of churches in our community, a lot of people around who are talking God's great love for everybody. But who's ready to show it and demonstrate it, to offer service, to really give and to live bright in the world in such a way that says, my faith is alive. I know it and I want to share it with you and I want to demonstrate this love that's on fire within me, that's lighting up within me. And so we share these t-shirts and people would look, show me some love, show me, what do you mean? And then in the fine print, they read about our ministries of compassion, calling people out to stop just talking and start doing. 
The world is hungry for that. Let us be those kind of people then that are there to demonstrate what we believe, to live out our spiritual principles and to apply them always in our life. Ever offering this approach to a pure heart that is so important to us, then inviting people to come to this pure heart of love, grace, mercy. Come and experience it because it's alive within me. Now you may say, but I'm just one. I'm just one. And what I have to offer is so simple and so small. It's really insignificant. I want to remind you that in Holland, there were always these wonderful dikes, these big, big walls that would have pushed back the walls of water. All it took was one little crack, one little drip, drip after drip after drip after drip after drift until suddenly it burst open and the dam broke and all the water flooded through. You see, it's one of those things where every little tiny drop in the end will fill a large vessel. And if we understand this within our own spiritual lives that everything we do, whether we think it's great or small, sooner or later it fills this large vessel of this world with wonderful living faith. I invite you today to live bright. Live bright through the service. Live bright through the demonstration of your faith. Live bright through the witness of your words. Live bright in such a way that your faith is not dead. Dead meaning stagnant, stuck still. Sometimes we get in those places, don't we? Where our faith has just been, we know it, we know it, we know it, but it's just stuck and it's stagnant and it's still there. It's almost as if it's dead, yet we know it within our hearts and our lives, but there's not a demonstration to bring life to it. How important it is then we awaken. Living bright is, let me show you my faith. Let me reveal it through the words, the actions, and the deeds that I share. If that's your desire, then I'm going to wrap up this talk. And you're going to wrap it up with me because I'm going to teach you a wrap. That's right. You're all going to wrap together. So I'm going to invite the voices of celebration to come and join me up here. And you're going to find this wrap on the screen. It says, now I know, so here I go. I live it, show it, let it flow. My faith is alive. I am the light. I'm sharing, <laughs> serving. I'm living bright. Now you all thought, wait a minute. I never thought I'd go to church and be a rapper. But you are gift wrappers. That's right. You're a wonderful gift, and you're here to wrap with us. So please rise as you're able in body or in spirit, and let's join in together as we wrap this wonderful affirmation within our hearts and our lives. Would you join with me? Now I know, so here I go. I live it, I show it, I let it flow. My faith is alive, I am the light. I'm sharing, serving, I'm living bright. Now I know, so here I go. I live it, I show it, I let it flow. My faith is alive, I am the light. I'm sharing, serving, I'm living bright. Uh, now I know, so here I go. I live it, I show it, I let it flow. My faith is alive, I am the light. I'm sharing, I'm serving, I'm living bright. Once again, now I know, so here I go. I live it, I show it, I let it flow. My faith is alive, I am the light. I'm sharing, I'm serving, I'm living right. All right, you've got it. Now, who said you aren't a rapper? Y'all are doing fine. I, I would just love it if you could just get a few gestures going. Come on, get your groove on, all right? Get your little moves on, because y'all have got that wonderful... You, Eminem has nothing on you, uh-huh. All the great rappers of our community and our world have nothing on you. You've got it down. You're doing it so great. One more time. Let's do it through two times together, okay? Now... Now I know, so here I go. I live it, I show it, I let it flow. My faith is alive, I am the light. I'm sharing, I'm serving, I'm living right. And now I know, so here I go. I live it, I show it, I let it flow. My faith is alive, I am the light. I'm sharing, I'm serving, I'm living right. All right, give yourself a round of applause. You may be seated.